bright duty every student matters in this section we'll study about the endocrine system in humans in the last section we studied about the nervous system the nervous system in humans which helps in control and coordination of our various activities physical as well as physiological activities but in this section we'll study about another system which helps in control and coordination that is endocrine system now endocrine system actually is done by certain glands now what are glands glands are certain specific cells or tissues or organs that produce secretions and those secretions perform certain specific functions all such cells or the organs are called glands which produce secretions so broadly there are two types of glands the endocrine glands and exocrine glands the endocrine glands are called ductless glands they do not have ducts so they pour their secretions directly into the circulatory system into the blood so once they pour their secretions into the blood as the blood circulates in the body it carries those secretions to each and every cell of the body then these hormones reach their target site the site where they have to produce their action where they stimulate the organs those sites are known as target sites or the target organs the the chemicals secreted by the endocrine glands are known as hormones so endocrine system consists of all the endocrine glands which secrete hormones into the blood and then from the blood it reaches the target sites and produces act actions which control which help in controlling and coordinating the activities of a body on the other hand the exocrine glands they possess ducts so they secrete pour their secretions directly over the target sites they do not pour their secretions into the blood for example the gastric glands they secrete their secretions into the stomach where it produces action it helps in digestion of the food there is no involvement of circulatory system here and also the salivary glands their secretions saliva into the mouth these target sites are adjacent to the gland as i just told you gastric glands are situated on the stomach itself and they secrete various chemicals like enzymes or mucus etc so this way you can differentiate between endocrine and exocrine glands for control and coordination our main uh, concentration will be on the endocrine glands now as i just told you we have a very well developed nervous system for control and coordination so why do we need another system for this control and coordination what is the need for endocrine system well we need this endocrine system because there are certain limitations of the nervous system which are overcome by endocrine system firstly the nervous system does not reach each and every cell of the body it reaches certain specific sites but not each and every cell of the body secondly the effect produced by nervous system is for a very short duration as we discussed in this reflex arc what happens if you touch a hot surface you immediately remove your hand and the impulse dies so the effect was for a very short duration but in certain cases effect is required for a very longer duration for like growth the effect for uh, development you need effect for a longer duration so this is the limitation of a, our nervous system thirdly in nervous system the impulses cannot pass continuously there is a gap required a small gap required between two impulses these limitations of nervous system are overcome by our endocrine system in endocrine system the hormones the secretions they reach each and every cell of the body through blood blood touches all the cells and they are supplied with the hormones secondly the effect produced by the hormones is for a longer duration as compared to the nervous impulse thirdly the information of the endocrine system can pass on continuously persistently through blood 
So, this these limitations of nervous system are overcome by endocrine system. That is why we have two systems for our control and coordination. So, that they act simultaneously and they uh, support each other. Now, if you are asked to compare the nervous system and the endocrine system, the nervous system they act through nerves and through electrical impulses which pass through the nerves. While in the endocrine system, they act through hormones, the chemicals secreted by the endocrine glands. The nervous system, the action, uh, there is fast and very rapid conduction through nerves, from one nerve to another nerve and then nerve to the target site. The conduction is very fast because they are directly connected to the organ. But in endocrine system, the, this conduction is comparatively slower. In nervous system, there is a direct connection between the nerves and the target site or the organ. For example, as I told you in the reflex arc, the muscles, the nerves end on the muscles and they show the action directly onto that muscle. But in the endocrine system, the hormones or the secretions, they are not in direct contact with the target sites. There, there are isolated organs, the endocrine glands, which secrete their secretions and the secretions have to travel through the blood to reach the target site. So, there is no direct connection between the endocrine glands and the target sites. Thirdly, the endocrine system, the response shown by endocrine system is comparatively slow, but they reach each and every cell of the body. And lastly, the effect, the effect produced is for a longer duration. This way, we can compare the nervous system and the endocrine system. Now, let us move on to the next section that is the detail or the characteristics of the secretions which are which we call as hormones. Now, what are hormones? Hormones are the chemical messengers or the informational molecules. They carry the information of, for the action to be produced. They for inducing and coordinating the activities of different organs. Now, what are the characteristics of these hormones, these chemicals released by endocrine glands? Firstly, they are produced by the endocrine glands, which are the ductless glands. The, these endocrine glands, they pour their secretions, that is the hormones, into the circulatory system. So, hormones enter the circulatory system first and they are transported in, along with the blood into the arteries. Then they reach the specific site or the specific organ where they show their effect. That site is known as the target site. The f they function as chemical messenger that trigger specific chemical or physiological activity on their target site. The action is slow except for one hormone that is adrenaline. Otherwise, most of the uh, hormones show a very slow onset of action. The uh, hormones are required in very, very small quantity in micrograms. The deficiency or the excess of these hormones is harmful. It can produce certain harmful effects on the body. Now, let us move on to the next section in which we will study in detail about all the hormones in our body, about all the endocrine glands present in our body. Okay, let us move on. First one is hypothalamus. It is present in the brain. It is a very important gland. It secretes certain neurohormones. These neurohormones in return, they are passed on to pituitary gland. They control the activities of the pituitary gland. The second one is pituitary gland. It is present near the hypothalamus in the brain itself. It is very important gland and it is known as the master endocrine gland, this pituitary gland because it releases so many hormones which in return control the activities of other hormones. It stimulates the other hormones to work uh, properly. Now, one of the important hormones released by pituitary gland is the growth hormone, short for GH. It stimulates the growth in the growing uh, bodies. All right. So, if the growth hormone is released in larger quantity, what will happen? It will release to gigantism. But if the growth hormone is released in smaller quantity, it releases to dwarfism. The height is smaller than the usual, than normal. So, gigantism and dwarfism. 
So basically hormones as I told you they are required in very small but precise quantity. Slight increase or decrease in the amount can lead to harmful effects. Another important hormone released by pituitary gland is TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. As I told you pituitary gland secretes many hormones which in turn regulate the activity of other hormones. So one of them is TSH. This hormone stimulates the thyroid gland to produce and to secrete its hormones as per the requirement of the body. Next third one is the penile gland. This is also present near hypothalamus in the brain. It secretes the hormone melatonin which controls the mood and the sleep of a living body. The fourth one is thyroid gland. It is present in the neck region attached to the trachea below the larynx. It is roughly H shaped. It is the largest endocrine gland of our body and it is roughly H shaped with two lobes. All right. So the deficiency of iodine if you take taking food which is deficient in iodine what will happen this thyroid gland will enlarge and there will be swelling in the neck region that condition is known as goiter the, this goiter is very common in uh, northern hilly regions because their food is deficient in iodine so now the uh, our uh, our salt the common salt which we take is compulsorily iodized to reduce this incidence of goiter this the hormone released by thyroid gland is thyroxine it controls the BMR that is basal metabolic rate so at rest the your rate of metabolism is controlled by thyroxine so it determines the amount of consumption of energy by the body it also controls the tendency of the body to gain weight and it plays a very important role in physical and mental development these are the uh, conditions controlled by thyroxine. The next gland is parathyroid. There are two pairs of very tiny yellow colored glands parathyroid. They are embedded into the thyroid gland on the posterior side of the thyroid gland back side the two in on each lobe. Uh, the, they secrete the hormone called parathormone. They control the optimum level of calcium and phosphorus in the blood. The next one is thymus. It is present near the heart. The hormone released is known as thymosin. It plays important role in immunity and in the production of lymphocytes. It protects us against the allergies or infections. So it is very important especially in the growing children when immunity is building up. So it is larger in size in children. It is reaches the maximum size at puberty. After puberty, it starts shrinking. In old age, it is microscopic, this thymus gland. So thymus gland, the role is in boosting the immunity of the body. The next gland is the pancreas. Pancreas, as you know, it is present near the stomach. It, uh, it has two parts, the exocrine part and the endocrine part. That is why we call uh, pancreas as heterocrine gland. The exocrine part as you know we studied in nutrition chapter it secretes digestive juices directly into the duodenum which helps in digestion of nutrients. But the endocrine part uh, releases the hormone which it is called insulin very important hormone it secretes ins insulin into the blood. This insulin controls the level of glucose or sugar in our blood. Now, if there is deficiency of insulin, less amount of insulin is produced by pancreas, what will happen? The glucose level in the blood will increase. This condition is known as diabetes. It is very harmful because higher glucose level in the blood can have harmful effect on other organs like brain, kidney, liver. It can damage other organs. So that is why right amount of insulin is maintained in the body which is very important. The patients of diabetes they are either given hypoglycemic medicine which lower the glucose level in the blood or sometimes they are even given the insulin injectables before their meals to maintain the right amount of glucose in the body. The next gland is adrenal gland. There are two pyramid shaped gland present over the kidneys. 
the outer part is known as adrenal cortex, the inner part is known as adrenal medulla. They release three hormones together known as corticoids. So, two important hormones released by adrenal medulla are adrenaline and noradrenaline. The adrenaline is known as emergency hormone. It enables the animals to decide for flight, fight or fright. So, it is known as emergency hormones. More of adrenaline is secreted as in response to fear, cold, anxiety or emotional stress. So, you must have noticed if you are stressed, your heart rate increases, you start sweating, you know. All these responses are produced by adrenaline. When adrenaline is released in the body, what happens? The arteries of the skin and elementary tract, they contract. So, more of the blood is supplied to the muscles, right? So, the breathing rate increases, you start breathing heavily. What happens? The blood gets oxygenated. At the same time, the heart rate increases. So, what happens? This oxygenated blood is supplied to muscles. More of oxygenated blood reaches the muscles. So, muscles now they are ready to produce a response. I, when an animal is ready to run, to save himself, his muscles are ready for lar with large amount of energy. That is why we call it an emergency hormone, the adrenaline. Now, the next one is our gonads. In males, they are a pair of testes which produce the hormone testosterone. Testosterone is responsible for all the uh, secondary sexual organs which are cha the changes observed during puberty. And in females, there are, there are pair of ovaries, they release the hormone estrogen, which are responsible for development of secondary sexual organs in females. The ovaries also uh, release another hormone called progesterone, which helps in maintenance of pregnancy. It is called pregnancy hormone. So, these are all the endocrine glands and the hormones released by them and the effect shown by these hormones. As I told you, the right amount of hormone and the right timing of hormone release is very important. A slight change can produce harmful effects. So, there has to be a mechanism which controls the timings and the amount of hormone released. That mechanism is known as feedback mechanism. How does it work? Let us take an example of pancreas and insulin. So, Whenever there is a high blood glucose level, what will happen? This will stimulate the pancreas gland. The high glucose level stimulates the pancreas gland. The gland will release more of insulin. Right. So, this insulin level will help in metabolism of glucose and the glucose level will come down. As the glucose level comes down in the blood, this inhibits the glands. So, high glucose level stimulates the gland while lower glucose level inhibits the glands. So, whenever there is high glucose level, more of insulin will be produced, the glucose level will come down, this will in turn inhibit the gland and the insulin level secretion will stop. This is known as feedback mechanism. By this feedback mechanism, the exact timing and the amount of hormone secreted by, the, by these endocrine glands is maintained for proper functioning of the body.